How's it going, people? So, as you can see, webcam is back. Today we are going to be talking about something I and you guys are all very, very into, I'm sure, and that is the fighting nerds who have had an amazing 2024 so far and built up quite the fan base, which is why I'm going to be ranking them today in order of my favorites. That would be based off of fighting style and, yeah, overall character. So, first of all, we're just going to do a quick overview of the gym. As you can see, Flavio Alvaro is the head coach. He is also right here, the fighting nerd with the most fights, and he retired in 2017. So a lot of his record is padded, and the only really notable fight and opponent that he had for Western fans would be back in 2009, he fought Francisco Trinaldo, who's the dude that was supposedly fraud-checked Khabib that one time. He lost him in a decision, but yeah, that is... As far as that goes for Flavio, still quite the impressive record, and he mostly fought at a time when there wasn't a lot of big MMA organizations, so very cool. Outside of that, the gym has a lot of fighters that people don't really know about. They aren't really in the UFC, most of them, and um, the only notable one that isn't in the conversation typically would be Thiago Moises. He trained there for a short stint, might still do it occasionally, but I know he mainly trains out of American Top Team. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the list. And my least favorite would be Bruna Brazil. So, let me start this by saying I like these fighters all very much. I think what mostly stands makes them all stand out to me would be the ability to do standing knees not a lot of people implement standing knees and Bruna did that particularly well in her last fight against Molly McCann I'm pretty sure she either hurt her yeah she hurt her to the body I think in that fight which led to the finish which was a submission I believe oh decision women but as you can also see Bruna Brazil is the only fighting nerd to have lost in the UFC, and she did it twice to Loma Lukbumi. She really lost to Loma. That is concerning. But I still like Bruna a lot, so... Yeah, not throwing too much shade there. Um, she's still pretty young. She's only 31, which for women, inconsistent with the age, but... Usually they have a pretty long shelf life in the UFC. They can go pretty pretty long. I know Valentina's still doing well, and she's 36, I want to say. So, yeah, a lot longer longevity than typical for lightweight classes. But she did get finished by KO with uh, Denise Gomez, which is not that good. So, yeah, all that in... Just in general, the other guys on this list being very cool and fun to watch. It's hard to put Bruna above any of them. I was thinking about it, but she lost, and she isn't quite as fun to watch, I'd say, just because, you know, it's WMMA. They don't fight as hard. These things are to be expected. But yes, moving on. Still love you, Brazuna. Brazuna, Brabiro. You, very cool. Don't put me in a triangle. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd probably have to eat my way out. Anyway, um, Mauricio Huffy. He is my next least favorite. Mm. This was hard. These next three guys I really <laughs> struggled to rank because I just, like I said, like these people all very much. Mauricio I put here just because he's fought the least. He's the least active so far. And um, his one fight against Jamie Malarkey was very good. Very fun. And the Contender Series fight, same same stuff. But since then, he hasn't really fought. And I'm very disappointed the Charlie Campbell fight fell through because I've been a fan of Charlie since that Trevor Peak fight. He, he impressed there quite a bit. So that would have been a really good prospect matchup. But yeah, he is 28, the second youngest. I believe Gene Silva's the only one younger, and that would be a 27-year-old. 
very fun to watch. He did the scissor sweep, a lot of flying knees from this guy. He doesn't really do the standing knee thing as much. Like I said, that's what I really look for from these guys. I think that's a very underrated tool to use, and they all use it very good. And yeah, I have the least to say about him. I've seen him fight the least out of anyone, even Bruna. Very fun style, though, and I can't wait to see him next weekend during the Jones pay-per-view. I don't like John Jones very much. Moving on, Kyle Bahayo. So this one was very hard. I didn't know whether to pick between him and the next guy. A lot of you might have a good guess at who that is. We will see. One thing I would like to say, I think this guy gets a bad rap for his tattoos a lot. The neck tattoo is definitely the worst one. But I think he has some pretty cool tattoos. I don't think they're all in this photo. I think this is an old photo, but... Kyle, very cool. I almost put him ahead of this next guy. It was very, very tough. So his most recent fight was a win over Jared Cannonier. That fight was a war. He went five rounds to a decision somehow. <laughs> One of the only decisions to end in a knockout. Jared was dead by the end of that fight, which was just going to show how good he is for staying in there. But yeah, Kyle is a monster. I can't wait to see him fight other people at middleweight. From here, I think... He should get a top matchup, maybe an Imafov. That would be that would be nice. Nazardin, get him beat up real quick. And yeah, he's 31. The tied for the oldest. I don't know whether or not he's older than Prates or not. I know they're both 31, but a couple months or days difference between them. And he's in the heavier weight division out of all of them so far. So. His age isn't that awful for a middleweight, honestly. And yeah, really like his fight style. He's very fun, very good on the ground. He didn't get Paul Feldered. He beat Abus by decision. I would need to rewatch that fight to remember how round one went, but it's not a split decision, so who knows? Anyway, yeah, like Kayo a lot. Very cool dude. That fight with Cannoneer was a war if you haven't seen it. I would definitely recommend you watch it, but that takes me on to number three. Or, no, this would be number two. <laughs> uh, I'm bad at counting. Number two, my second favorite fighting nerd, Carlos Prates. He's fighting this weekend against Neil Magny. I wish he got a bigger step up. But I put him here simply because he smokes cigarettes, which is pretty cool for a fighter to do. Who needs cardio when you have nicotine? <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, a lot of the same stuff with uh, Kyo. He has good contender matchups. He beat Brad Key and Liang by knockout. I thought Liang knockout was pretty sick and it really put him on the map. The map. And um, as you can see here, he finished Radke with a knee to the body, which, like I said, standing knees. Very underutilized tool and very, very good in MMA. But yeah, not too much to say here. I hope he wins this weekend. I'm predicting him to win. A lot of the big uh, weakness of these guys is going to be grapplers, so... Magni would be the one to fraud check him, but he's not the highest level grappler. I think Trevor Giles, he shot a couple takedowns. I guess they're not similar, but yeah. Yeah, Magni's getting old. I don't think I don't think he'll be able to do it. Hopefully not. If he if he's the one to beat the fighting nerd, I mean, because. Everyone has this mindset that they're all undefeated, which technically they're not because of Bruno Brazil, but this is going for the men. And yeah, hopefully my Muay Thai boy does not get fraud checked. Oh yeah, also notable, this guy fought Charles Oliveira. That's totally Du Bronx Oliveira, not some other dude. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Beat him with the jab in round one. Let's go. Charles Prates. Car Carlos Prates. Anyway, without further ado, I'm sure a lot of your favorites and mine, predictably so. Gene Silva, this guy. This guy is pretty cool. Um, He's the youngest of the fighting nerds. And 
has been on a tear like all of them they came in through the contender series and um yeah he had an impressive debut against weston wilson don't know why this guy's in the ufc it's like a herbert burns level dude really no point in him being there he's just there to get hurt by someone it's quite unfortunate i'm seeing there was a william gomez fight that got canceled that would have been pretty nice to see gomez as we all know robbed brito a lot of robberies in the ufc lately i'm gonna talk about that pretty soon i think if there's a robbery this card which there definitely will be because there's been a robbery every single card for a while now and i'm gonna have to compile those and try to make sense of it all but yeah he fought Jordan and Dober, and I predicted the knockout. And Jordan never been knocked out. I saw it coming because I, I saw the autism and the walkout of Gene Silva, and I knew, I knew this guy was special. And the fighting nerds have gone on to prove they are very special. Did he miss weight for this? Forget about that. Yeah, who cares? Making weight. What is that good for? But yeah, he knocked out Jordan. Jordan now a bantam weight. Made that man run, change weight classes. Doesn't look as good as I'd like him to look at bantamweight. He got this guillotine in that recent fight, but he didn't look as impressive as I would have liked for Jordan. I'm a big fan of Jordan. Been been rooting him for him for a while, and yeah, I'm not liking what I'm seeing at bantamweight. I'm worried for the guy. But also the Drew Dober fight I saw. I was on my man, Gene Silva's side, and that went well for him. Yeah. If you haven't noticed, I have crippling autism. I'm spacing out. I don't really know how to talk to myself like this. Um, I hope I was able to entertain whoever's still here. If not, I have failed at my job. That is what trial by... I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm suffering from AIDS. But yeah. Um, yeah, just bear with me as I learn how to talk to myself and my computer. And suffer through this horrible, horrible autism I've been struck with. Anyway, yeah. Um, that's about all I gotta say about the fighting nerds. Gene Silva, very cool. Can't wait to see him back at it. I know he had like a hand injury or something recently. So, swift recovery for that. I hope he gets a fight announced pretty soon. Looking forward to Protez winning this weekend and Huffy next weekend. Once I see more of Huffy, maybe he'll move up a place or two. I don't know. But yeah, um, until next time, I'll see y'all. Give me a like and subscribe, pretty please. It'll give me the confidence to not be so retarded on the mic next time. But yeah, I got a better setup in case you didn't notice. My, my last few videos have had a little bit of shit quality, and that's because I'm using this shit mic right here. See that thing? It's no good right there. But yeah, we got a big boy now. And improved production quality so that should make up for my crippling autism but yeah enough of the rambling i'll see y'all stop wasting your time peace